hey y'all welcome back to the garage welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my life because it is another sunday in which the obs ford has broken for i don't know how many times this year give you a little bit of an update on what we got going on so this is pretty slick car 62 chevrolet impala kind of got that pro i'm not gonna say pro street it's kind of got that pro mod look where you know, it's got the right stance. It's got wide wheels and tires, disc brakes, A-arms, the whole nine yards. But it has got a pretty cool, well, hold on. Oh, mother It has an LS, unfortunately. This LS is no good. This one is just about ready to lift on out of here. Um... Matter of fact, I finished up on that last night up and the new one was getting all prepped up and ready to go back in. The 57 Chevrolet is completely painted. Anyways, but you can probably see the roof is a pearlescence. Really nice touch on that car. I am doing all the wet sanding and polishing, but you can see this car is nice and straight. So, a little bit left to finish up on this. Waiting on a couple of parts to come in. A uh, couple pieces of chrome, a couple pieces of stainless are on their way. Look at that shine. This. And it's dusty. But it's beautiful. And of course, over here, completely out of today's schedule, but pretty much kind of the norm. It is Sunday. The OBS basically threw a fit this morning, did a couple of cranks and starts to where it tapered off and just died and it finally got to a crank no start condition. And based on a few little things of, you know, being able to diagnose without having a scanner, let's talk about what those are. All right, so there's a few things on these seven threes that love to fail all of a sudden. And as a matter of fact, it's it, some of these things you just keep spares in the glove box. So one of them <clears throat> is the cam position sensor. And the really easy way to determine whether that just failed overnight or not was to go in and crank it, watch the tachometer. If the tachometer is reading the revolutions, you know it's good, that's not it. So jumped in the truck, cranked it, Watch the needle go boing, boing, boing. We knew that the cam position sensor was working just fine or the crank position sensor was working just fine. Okay, second one is, oh, right here. And this is called your ICP sensor, I believe it is. Injector, injector control pressure sensor, I believe is what it is. Anyways. If you unhook this, the computer goes into a safe mode. It will loop out, maximize the voltage, go into the injector drive module, which is sitting over there, that square block on the firewall. Right there. And tell it that it's got something like 26 to 2800 PSI of pressure here. And to move the injectors, and if you unplug that and go to start it, it should bypass, go into that loop, and just fire right up if that is your problem. That does not seem to be my problem. So it is called the High Pressure Oil Pump Reservoir. And that is this whole black body. That's actually a reservoir. Basically, I took that out, took a look down in there with the O-Light. Saw that there was absolutely no oil whatsoever in that reservoir. So, I filled that up and put that back in, went to the cab, gave it a crank, and what do you know, it fired right up. That is telling me, <clears throat> along with a couple other things that I'll explain, is, okay, so I already showed you guys this one, right? Well, way down in here, and it's not the most fun one in the world to get to but maybe you can see it maybe yeah okay all the way down here you have 
your injector pressure control valve, right? And basically what that is, it's an electromagnet with a tube and electricity goes to it, it pulls the pin back and it basically throttles the oil going to the oil rails with inside of your heads on this engine. All right, so a couple of things that I have to keep in mind and thinking back to this truck is number one is for a good amount of time now, my idle has been a little bit sporadic, even to the point that Taylor had pointed it out one day. Um, and that was almost a year ago, right? This isn't the first time that it's had a long crank, you know, and then a start. Um, it's also not the first time that that reservoir is empty and it's happened one other time before. So that is leading me to believe that I got a, you know, a pretty decent intermittent problem. And it's most likely the pin within that valve that is, um, it's a sprung pin and the electromagnet basically pulls the pin back and lets the oil flow um, going into your cylinder heads, which goes to your injector, so on and so forth. I also knew when I was doing the long cranks this morning, I was getting the no start that we were getting no fuel whatsoever. So one of the other things that I did in kind of a process of elimination was I took the fuel filter cap off of here and I very slowly unscrewed that. And the reason I did that is because I didn't want to disturb the fuel that was in there. I'm specifically looking for air bubbles. That would have basically told me whether or not my fault or my problem was in my fuel system, sucking air, drawing air, you know, could have been in the tank, so on and so forth. I mean, there's a bunch of other things that it could have been. So just a process of elimination. I unscrewed this cap took the filter out, looked at the fuel. It was not all agitated. There was not um, air bubbles in it. Put the filter back in, screwed it back down. And that basically told me that, you know, it's not in the fuel system at that point, but, you know, it could be a fuel delivery. But seeing as though I just replaced the high pressure fuel pump, like, I don't know, that was a repair a few weekends ago. It was, it was another Sunday. Hey, I'm going to throw a fit and piss all over the ground. Yeah, it did. And this is the Ford part. This is one of the spares that I've had laying around. That is the Ford Motorcraft part number. And this is the injector pressure regulator valve is what it is. And the backside, you can kind of see it is a long metal stem. It has just got a plastic boot over it so that it doesn't get damaged. Right here is your electromagnet, and then you got its collar, and, and you got its screw. And that's what it is that we are having to access that's way down in there. And to do that, some of the fuel system is going to have to get taken out of here. So if you are a 7.3 owner that you've probably made yourself, and this tool is made specifically to get to that. Um, they do fail. This is probably going to be the fourth one. I've never had one quite fail in this manner, which has kind of thrown me for a little bit of a loop. But hey, I could still be wrong on the diagnosis. But since I had the part, it's like, hey, why not go ahead and do it? But basically what this is. So this is an old Craftsman 1 and 1 8 inch 16 point socket. And it was welded to the end of an old 5 8 second S and K wrench is because you have to slide this over that long shaft that is on that injector pressure regulator and that's how you break it loose and put the new one in and change it out and to get a socket that long is pretty rare um, a lot of guys have ordered them but hey I had an old craftsman socket you know it's a good reason to leave these around for a while had an old wrench make tool you're gonna take the fuel filter out of here, right? And it just so happens that my handy dandy wrench fits right across the top of there. And you wanna turn that pretty slow. You don't wanna rip the O-ring. So we're gonna get that out of there.
And I'm just going to use a paint mixing cup. Drop that filter right into it. That way we are lowering the level of the fuel that's in there, the less likeliness that it's going to end up in our valve. We have lowered the level beyond that pickup line. So I think we should be able to get this off with minimal fuel spillage going on. We shall see. Okay, so in replacing that valve to this point, we've taken the filter out of here. We put that into a cup. We've lowered that fuel level pretty good. And we are about to take this unit off of here. Now, what I have done is this has two bolts. You can see one right there. And then there's another one down here. Now, I've loosened those up, but I didn't take them all the way out because I wanted this block to stay pretty stable on here because we are going to have to disconnect both of these fuel lines. I've already disconnected the blue line. And thank goodness it's on video. So we know it goes on top. All right, so that one is loose. Oh, and our block popped loose. We'll return after this commercial break. Okay, back again. Got both of those broke loose. Bottom one was pretty easy to pop off of there. That line's got a little bit of slack in it. This one up here just doesn't really want to, and you don't want a chance goofing up those threads. So we're just going to go ahead and take the bolts out up here so that we can slide this away. And the one was just replaced. That thing slid right off, so now we are free and loose there but we still have this hose where we left off here. was basically got that manifold out of there got that out of our way we disconnected our fuel line take the bolts out of the filter bowl there just enough so that i could pick it up and move it around a little bit and basically i got my wrench down in here i took the magnet off and there is our injector pressure regulator. Oh, the O-rings look pretty good on it. Nice stream of oil right in the lifter valley. Super. Okay, so we're gonna get that one all threaded in as far as we can go. And that's probably gonna be it. <clears throat> now, Got to get my handy dandy homemade tool back over top of there and finish tightening this down. Okay, y'all, so we got the IPR valve all changed out on there. Basically, uh, everything hooked back up. We put all the fuel lines back on. There's a million other videos out there to watch on actually doing one of those. And I'm the last guy in the world you should be watching on diesel, diesel truck stuff. So anyways, but we did get everything all put back together. Let's click our light on back here. One thing you got to remember is before you go cranking on this and firing it back up again, make sure you refill that oil reservoir because all that oil went into your valley right there but uh, I did put it in and ran the truck for and imagine there is a lot of air in the fuel system and there is really no place for it to go it is very hard to get the air out of the fuel system on these trucks so being as though it's almost out of fuel you can jump in this thing and roll roll on down the road and go go put some diesel in it we got the IPR valve put in everything else put back in we took the truck, we filled it up with fuel, we drove it around a little bit. It drove around really good. Got it back here, we've let it sit a couple hours. I went out and did a restart. Um, it's been sitting a few more hours. The temperature's dropped. Sometimes it can have something to do with it. But 
Let's see what we get this time. Let the glow plug cycle. Yeah, still a little bit longer than what I would want. Oh yeah, I tell you, that was a better restart than last time. May take a couple of restarts to get it back to normal, but uh, just to be safe, we're gonna go ahead and leave the truck here tonight. So we don't have to potentially tow it back and we're gonna take the Corvette home just to be safe. All right, y'all, that's where I'm gonna call it. It is almost 11 p.m. This whole thing is completely throwing a wrench in my day. We're gonna test this over the next couple of days, see how it does. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe to the channel. We'll see y'all next time.